Eh, Ángeles González Sinde, muchísimas gracias por venir al Instituto de Diplomacia Cultural. Thank you so much for coming uh, to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. Um, after a wonderful speech, we would like to ask you some questions uh, related to cultural diplomacy and your background. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, um, in this time of, in, of crisis in Spain, um, how can we convince Um, that is still very important to invest in culture and why um, even though cuts are sometimes necessary they should not be um, so hard in culture and which part of the culture should we be uh, should we be investing more uh, in, in Spain what area of the culture needs more investment and can bring better results hello thank you very much um, Well, it's a very complicated and long question, and I will try to answer briefly. But um, it just seems to me that there's a very, very long tradition in, in Spain, in our country at least, and maybe in Mediterranean countries, but mostly in Spain. I don't know if because it's been a Catholic country or because... Uh, Oftentimes, uh, people who worked for culture have been seen as troublemakers, as people who were uh, who would bring conflict about, and were very critical. But it seems that uh, culture has not been considered uh, really uh, a very useful part of society. It's been used mostly as an ornament or as a decoration or as something minor that it's nice that we could uh, live without in times of crisis. But that's That's not true, because time has proved that uh, actually the investments in culture that other governments many centuries ago made uh, are now what bring a lot of um, wealth into our country. For instance, the Prado Museum. Uh, you could not have the Prado Museum if uh, those kings and queens many centuries ago had invested in uh, the stock uh, trade market instead of investing on Velázquez paintings or Bosco paintings or or any other forms of culture. So really, it's uh, it's culture that really uh, stays with you after after time, and it's really what uh, later can bring other industries to flourish in Spain, such as uh, tourism. But I would not like to link only culture to, to tourism, but I really think that we need in, to insist once and again in the importance of the economic value of culture. And in, in Europe, particularly, uh, today it's mostly culture and knowledge that we could export to the world and that we could uh, use to create jobs. It's the power of our uh, creativity that will make um, jobs possible in this time of recession and uh, not uh, heavy industry like it was before in the 70s or in the 80s. Those uh, factories have long time ago gone to, to Asia, to other continents where they're much more competitive. So to insist in, in, in investing and protecting culture, I think it's very important also from a social and economic point of view. And which areas would be best than others? That's hard to say. I think cinema is just as important as theater, and I think um, opera, even though it might seem something that it's only uh, a pleasure for minorities, for the elite, is just as important as uh, artworks or avant-garde poetry. I think uh, it's all a puzzle, and in this puzzle that culture is, uh, all, all the pieces are just as important. So you really don't, uh, should not judge. I don't think it's for the government to judge what is more important is to judge what is more efficient and what is needed by um, by those um, by those collectives but those by those uh, in cultural uh, industries and creative industries is there any of these creative industries not um, taking too much in consideration or more than which uh, sector should be more um, we should invest more Uh, is there any sector that you consider should need, needs to have more um, support? Well, what I think is that uh, we, we have to keep in mind that all the progresses that are made in, in culture are very fragile. Uh, 
And we have examples of countries that had a very strong and important uh, film industry like Mexico or Italy, and they went through crisis and they almost had no production uh, for years and no protagonism in the, in the international field. So right now, um, I wouldn't say that one field is more important than another. They all have different needs and they need to be explored very in detail and very um, uh, really made, it it's all needs to be tailored made. Because another difficulty that I found while being a minister is that time changes everything so fast now, while uh, the administration, the bureaucrats, uh, they are, uh, you know, they're, so, they're very slow. The, the machinery of the government is so huge and obsolete in many cases that you cannot adjust to the very, very rapid changes in, in civil society. So uh, that's another handicap when you're trying to, to make policies. So I think culture works in a micro uh, scale while the government, the state, politics work in a macro scale and the adjustment between those two scales is difficult and a lot of people are uh, and a lot of uh, works and a lot of projects and opportunities for uh, creating employment are uh, left behind and are lost in this um, real uh, difficult adjustment between your policies and those who have to are affected by them. Thank you. Um, I want to ask you uh, another question regarding to the to this question we just we just uh, had. Is um, we know that in the current crisis, the budgets to culture are are suffering a lot of cuts around Europe. Then um, how can the the culture obtain more money and fundraising to keep uh, as such as in the past? And can the the culture we can have a culture with quality without the um, fundraising from the from the states? Well, that's that's a very uh, interesting debate because. Um, in Spain, we don't have, or in Europe in general, we don't have a very big tradition of private sponsoring of museums or of any of the arts or the creative industries. So um, it's uh, it's mostly the governments and the state that uh, that do the financing or part of the financing. And oftentimes those theaters where plays are, are uh, performed are owned by city councils or are owned by uh, in public institutions, for instance, in, in, in the case of theater, in the case of uh, museums, or in the case of auditoriums for music or conservatories, they're all public funded. So a lot of uh, the funding of the arts relies on, on the efforts of of the uh, taxpayers actually and I think um, that on the one hand that's good because uh, when I see how um, private institutions with their foundation spend their money in Spain at least uh, of course they choose where to put the money and in Spain they tend to be very very conservative and they would spend their money in having uh, maybe, I don't know, this uh, show uh, of um, impressionist uh, painting uh, that is very nice to have, but does not uh, contribute to new works being uh, made. So, um, because we are also in this debate between what is culture, what is entertainment, what is propaganda, uh, I think the, um, the government tends to be more neutral and the government and cultural diplomacy, I think one very, very uh, important uh, issue that should be kept in mind for those who make those policies is that uh, uh, you should keep your hands off uh, those who make culture and just uh, be able to prov provide the means for creators to create and for uh, distributors to distribute those those uh, cultural products, but not try to direct uh, that. And um, private funding tends to direct and tends to 
uh, award certain expressions of uh, reality and and others that not maybe that pleasant or that uh, mm, you know becoming well they they would lift uh, they would be left aside and changing the this this main subject and Changing from the crisis to the cultural diplomacy that we are here, and uh, we want to ask, uh, what is your opinion about cultural cultural diplomacy? What is cultural diplomacy for you? What is your experience with the cultural diplomacy? Well, my experience is that cultural diplomacy it's important, but uh, that we should be aware of when it's manipulative, and we should, like Mark Donfried said today, we should be. Uh, ready and willing to listen to other cultures as much as exporting our cultures and that because uh, culture is like a mirror that reflects uh, reality and digests uh, the contradictions of our society it also um, uh, is a very good mean to achieve other uh, other objectives such as mediation, such as uh, equality, gender equality, or race equality, or um, to spread democratic ideas. And I was giving the example before how in my experience in, in Spain, in my country, before we had the democracy in the 70s and we lived for 40 years under uh, uh, um, the, the regime of, uh, of Franco, uh, in that di dictatorship, it was so important how those uh, the cultural diplomacy of democratic countries, such as Italy or France or Britain or Germany, who had their uh, institutes, their cultural institutes open, and how they could, uh, it was a realm of freedom, of, of democratic uh, values, where you could learn something that was forbidden uh, in your own country, and you could learn that other ways of living were possible and it could really be um, important to to uh, to foster you know imagination and, and, and democratic imagination because sometimes you cannot um, transform your reality if you are not capable of dreaming it before of um, seeing it in your mind so to provide those images of other uh, more equal societies and, and pe where, where people live with dignity uh, and, and to have a, a precise idea of what dignity means and what progress means which uh, today I think we confuse progress with uh, wealth with being rich with being a millionaire with being a successful businessman and and I think progress has more to do with dignity for everyone um, then if you don't have those very clear images it's more difficult that you can organize yourself organize uh, your community towards that goal so there's very good examples uh, of how cultural diplomacy can work in times of conflict and I remember one very impressive speech that the ex-mayor of Medellin in Colombia gave us how they transformed the very very violent city of Medellin through uh, the building of um, libraries, public libraries and schools of music for children and how that would uh, be part of the life of a small community, a small barrio or neighborhood and how uh, violence would be eradicated because they wanted to respect something that they uh, realized was good for, for them and, and respect the, you know, children with their violins or their uh, instruments uh, walking through the streets uh, that had been very dangerous up until a few months before when before the school was open so there's very good examples of how culture can transform uh, a city or a town or um, bring people to to debate ideas in in a field that is not maybe as uh, um, flammable, as uh, passionate as um, when you're discussing politics, no? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Angeles González Sinde. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros and uh, for coming to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy and we hope to receive you here soon. Thank you and I uh, hope you have a very good um, uh, rest of the week. <laughs>